What's up, you guys, and welcome back to Koshaku of Gaming. My name is Alan, and we are continuing Little Red Lie for the PS4. Alright, so, um, <clears throat> if you guys didn't know, uh, if you guys didn't see the last part, um, it was mostly, it mostly had to do with, uh, the, the lady, and we just transitioned back to Arthur, Arthur Fox. Right now, he's looking something to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, looking for something. He's gonna pull. <laughs> he's, gonna pull. <laughs> he's looking for something to fap to, basically. Uh, so we're we're trying to find him. We're trying to hook him up. We're trying to see if we can locate something. You said nah. What are my options? He doesn't want to use his imagination. He said, I guess I'm pretty sexy. How conceited we have to be to fap to yourself. <laughs> all right, oh crap, it's all dudes. Am I missing something? Live that life. Can I? I can't go in here, can I? She's always late anyways. Does it intentionally make herself look important? I got plenty of time. Some people think the mirror setup is a bit over the top. But what can I say? I'm a child of the 80s. This better be better than the shit they sold me last time. No, what bothered me was that it was inconceivable. It was inconceivable, and the fact that it was inconceivable meant that I was nothing but a joke to them. They knew that I didn't really think what I was saying, and I knew that they didn't really care. One more, then I'll beat off, and then I'll be perfectly situated for this bullshit. Uh-oh. Arthur, are you in there? Shit. <laughs> uh, perfect timing, lady. People ask me, how do you feel about having a woman for a boss? I love this, because it's a great moment to take the moral high ground. To explain to whoever makes such an insensitive inquiry that you've got to put a professionalism first. And that women don't exist to be objects for sexual evaluation. Of course, the real reason I don't care about my boss being a woman is that she's overweight, over 30, and as such, I don't really consider her to be a woman to begin with. <laughs> to me, she's just a person. That's feminism, right? And also, she isn't really my boss. My real boss is her boss, who is a man. Her title has something to do with marketing. One of those executive positions they made up a long time ago specifically to put women into. Wow, maybe she used to dress up as a hot dog and stand on a corner with some kind of sign, but it doesn't matter. The point is this, a boss is a boss is a boss. 
We're all here to make money. Man, woman, zebra, who cares? Suck up to fuck face boss. <laughs> well, that's one thing about this game. It has really uh, interesting titles. But she can't see all this fucking coke and all these fucking cabinets are locked. Lie about drug addiction. That typically works. I've actually tried that before. Uh, not the whole coke thing, mind you guys. Uh, pretend when I was when I was a kid, I uh, I didn't want to go to school just because I didn't want to. Um, and I remember I pretended that I was throwing up. I had the door, had the door closed. I pretend I threw up. And I made it loud enough so that everyone in the house could hear me. <laughs> and uh, I actually got to go to school that day. And it worked. I think I'm coming down with something. Sorry to hear that. Can I give you a call tomorrow? No. Fucking hell. I'm on an overnight flight. Is there any chance you could come out for a few minutes? Christ, I'm going to have to commit this. Oh, well. Maybe I'll lose a few pounds. Oh, this guy's actually throwing up. <laughs> I just said I was pretending. Jesus, what's it gonna take to get rid of her? I think I found blood in my ear. I think I found blood in my stool. I think I found blood in my lungs. Uh, that, that's a good one. Psychosomatic. That's the spirit. Well, at least you probably won't go into the bath box from somebody just spent the last two minutes throwing up in. Then again, you think you know people. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just, uh, I need to use the bathroom real quick where you threw up everywhere at. It's okay, I'll step over the puke. Blow their baby boomer inheritance to start a bakery that only sells one muffin. Some genius somewhere looked at a generation that never had anything, but who was about to be given a ton, and rather than simply wait for them to spend it, this man asked a simple, timeless question. Why let people piss away what we can convince them to borrow against?
Alright, so we're back at... Wow, I keep forgetting her name. <clears throat> but then again, her name doesn't show up like Arthur Fox every freaking 20 minutes. Uh, alright. Yeah, tell me about it. Downtown in every city takes freaking forever to park. It's fine, Dad. I talked to my boss. Lots of people have family commitments. They have to be reasonable. Dad, half the people I work with now run for the door the moment the kids get a nosebleed. Who do you think picks up the slack? I'm owed on this one. Seriously. I know, but you need to save those times when you have really emergencies. This isn't one. You said we don't have any money. I think that counts as an emergency. I said there are things we can't afford anymore. Don't exaggerate. <laughs> He's like, don't start putting words in my mouth. Tell Maggie we're here, all right? I'm just going through our papers one more time. That's your name, Sarah Stone, okay. He thought it was a computer mistake? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I'll send you this cancellation notice. Uh, I read it and yeah, I thought it was a computer mistake. You know, the computer, your system glitched out sending out random cancellation emails to everyone in the system. Right. Uh, that's, that's wishful thinking for you, hoping that it's just a mistake. This detailed email saying that we've canceled your appointment. Yeah, she can tell this is going to get ugly. Right, I guess we'll uh, sit this one out for now. boring and mentally and unstimulating yes that is the majority of jobs that i've worked retail actually the state was pretty cool I, that was probably my favorite job i've ever had was working for the state when i was a student If she called Bucky or called security, that's a good one. Mr. Stone, sir, I'm so sorry. Well, it looks like she, uh, she, uh, called Bucky. We came through hell and high water, damn it, to see you. You better be here. You better be happy to see us. 
My dad was a cop. He had probably gone out of his way his whole life to never intimidate people like this in front of me. But he had probably done it every single day. Then again, I realized that seeing this side of my father is what I came here to see. Why is his dialogue so damn loud? I don't know, maybe that's just to emphasize his authority. You see, you hear how loud that is? It's like a damn typewriter or something. to this bucky <laughs> financial literacy. I know a lot from that finance place actually. I'll be fine. Say something confident. The upshot is that we broke up anyway, right? Okay, never go with the first thing you think of. Sorry. All of the rainy day money was gone. All the things that were supposed to happen somewhere never did. The money that once made more money sank beneath the waves. Every trick imaginable to protect it was neutralized somehow. There was simply too much of it being spent, too much denial, too little growth. When it was all over, Bucky put the ornate gold leaf binder that bad that had stored our family records into a drawer and came out with a couple of photocopied pamphlets. There isn't much we can do for you up here in wealth management that will deliver sufficient value. I'll be happy to move your accounts back down to the general bank, and there are plenty of good people down there who can help you, but you must be kidding me. about what Mr. Stone? You've been my financial advisor for the past 35 years. Your entire career basically. I was one of your first clients. Half of what went wrong here is because of your advice. That isn't fair Mr. Stone. There were plenty of years we saw excellent returns. Well, well above the average of how our competitors were performing. And yet even over all that time I'll bet that not one of you, you beat your own goddamn commissions. Obviously, I can't discuss the business I do with any of my other clients, Mr. Stone, but results do always vary. fuck out of here you know how much i'm charging you right now and you can't afford me so get the stepping 
Get the step in. Always the fucking Beatles. <laughs> yeah, great song. And please, Sarah, you're not a kid anymore. Call me Bucky. All right, Bucky. He smiled and stuck his hand out to shake. Not knowing what else to do, I shook it. More than anything, I wish I'd kept calling him Mr. Albert. The moment I said Bucky, a strange look spread across his face, like he made peace with what had happened to us, and probably most of his other clients. It was like I forgave him, or he forgave himself. It was like he was already picturing himself on the lake in Muskoka, telling his buddies, I gave people the worst news of their lives. They still call me Bucky. They still giggle at my zany neckties. That's just how great a guy I am. But it only mattered to him whether we forgave him or not. He was on his way out. We were still here. The media are full of shit. Uh, I think you mean the media is full of shit. I know this is going to sound whatever, whatever, but please explain something to me. How is the media supposed to mean anything to ordinary people when it increasingly run by people who are barely out of college? I mean, I understand that their parents basically bought them the jobs, but it's getting ridiculous. That isn't to say that I have a problem with any of them, but do they live the way that I do? care about the things that I care about? Of course not. I guess it's the one idiot here who isn't dressed like he's a beer commercial. Might as well talk to him and get this shit over with. Alright, well you guys, I think I'm going to stop the video right here. Be sure to smack the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all on the next part.